Good afternoon. I am Koff, and this is Confidence Game Theater. We are going to uh, demonstrate a couple of con games and talk about how they work. Um, yeah, sorry, that was, that was my whole introduction. I, I didn't have anything else to say, so I was, yeah, okay. <laughs> and our first, um, our first demonstration is going to be a confidence game that I'm guessing a lot of you have heard of and some of you may have even seen. It's called Three Card Money. Um, and I don't, actually, I don't actually have any cards up here, so, you know, don't bother standing on your chairs. Um, so I've got, I've got, uh, oh, you guys ready? All right. I've got three little cards here. One red queen and two black cards. The queen wins, the black cards lose. I move them around. If your eyes are faster than my hands, you win. Here we go. One, two, three. 20 gets you 40, 40 gets you 80. All you got to do is keep your eye on the lady. Which one is she? Hey, this one right here. That one right there. Hey, we have a winner. Here you go. The winning card is exactly where I thought it was going to be. This game looks easy. All righty. Look here. Win. Lose. Lose. Watch him cruise. Which one do you choose? Oh, right there again. Right there. This yeah. one here. Oh, hey, that's a red card. We have a winner. There you go. Card is exactly where I thought it was again. This game is easy. All righty, here we go. I don't bet low, I only bet high. Look, 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 try, try, try. Where'd you go? Uh, that one, right there. Um, oh, no, that one's, that one's a black card. Sorry, the black cards lose. The red card wins. That's this one here. The red card's the winner. The, he, she totally chose the wrong card. I knew exactly where the card was going to be. All righty, all right, here we go, here we go. Pardon? Speak up. I can't hear you. Can't hear you. That sucks. <laughs> All right, here we go. Win, lose, lose, watch them cruise. Which one do you choose? This one right here. Oh, nope. See, that's a black card. The black cards lose. The red card wins. That's this one here. The red card wins. Yeah, screw this game, man. Oh, whoa, whoa. Please, please. Don't, don't, don't throw my cards on the floor. Don't throw my cards on the floor. If they get, they get on the ground, they get on the ground, they get dirty, they get soiled, you can see one from another, then it's not a fair game. I'm playing this for money. This is a real game. I'm playing this for money. You know, please, please play fair. Did you see that? She just bent the winning card. This game's going to be so easy to win. Heck, this is a sure thing. Heh, heh, heh. <laughs> All righty, here we go. One, two, three. Which one do you choose? 20 bucks. 20 bucks, that one. I'll double that bet. All righty, and we have a winner. There you go, sir. I had the winning card. If I just bet more, I would have won. All righty, here we go. Win, lose, lose. Watch him cruise. Which one do you choose? 20 bucks. 20 bucks, that one. All right, I'll see your 20. I'll raise you 80. $100 or no bet? 100 bucks or no bet? Um, I've got uh, 80 bucks. Uh, I'll, I'll go in for 20. His, my 20, his 80, that's 100. All right, money in hand, money in hand or no bet? All right, turn over the card. Oh, no, see, sorry, that's, that's a black card. The black cards lose, the red card wins. Oh, shit, I'm on cops. Oh, thanks. WTF. <laughs> I can't believe this. What just happened? I, shot, I thought I had a sure thing. Maybe I should go to the cops. Sure, what happened? Oh, these guys came by, and yeah. there was a game going on, and... I was lost some money. Card money game? Three card money? Oh, yeah. I was just here last week, and they took me for about 120 bucks. So maybe I should go to the cops? No, man. You go to the cops, they're going to give you a citation, you're going to have to show up in court, and then you're going to have some problems. I mean, I would just uh, and cut your losses. Do you, do you need a cab ride or something? You got, you got, did you lose all your cash? No, I, I can walk to the bus or something like that. I'm so good. You need a couple bucks? No, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, yeah, just, you know, I got taken too, man, but just... The best thing to do is just cut your losses and don't tell anyone. All right, I think I'll do that. And that's how Mr. Victim lost his money. So, three card, three card money uh, illustrates a lot of the important aspects of a confidence game. Uh, a confidence game is a crime of deception where the victim is persuaded to more or less voluntarily hand over their money. 
Now, where confidence games differ from other crimes of deception, for example, uh, cheating and gambling or outright fraud, is that in a confidence game, the victim believes that he is taking dishonest advantage of one or more of the con artists, typically. This has, this has several advantages for the criminals. Uh, one is, you will, t you will get more victims. Right? You can only take someone with fraud if they're actually interested in buying what you're pretending to sell. You can only take someone by cheating in a, in a, it's like in a card game, if they're interested in gambling at that game. Whereas with a confidence game, when you, when you offer someone an opportunity to, to play, and they think they have a dishonest advantage, they are confident that they're going to win, uh, you can get more people involved. They, uh, confidence games also have another advantage, which is you can typically take a victim for more money than you can uh, with, with straight fraud, right? A, a savvy gambler will only bet what he can afford to lose. A, a prudent uh, purchaser will only buy uh, things that he can afford. I mean, I, I realize not everyone does that, but um, on average, you, you can get more money out of your victim with a confidence game because they don't think they're going to lose the money. And so they can be persuaded to, to risk more than they could afford to lose. They can be persuaded to risk borrowed money. They can be persuaded to risk their savings. And a, a third advantage that confidence games have over uh, typical fraud uh, again, from the criminal's perspective, is they tend to be less risky. It's harder for the victim to complain because then the victim would have to admit to having done something either illegal or immoral. Uh, for example, trying to, trying to take advantage of someone else, trying to, uh, in the case of three-card money, trying to cheat at the game. And in fact, it's, it's common for victims to give reports that are wildly inaccurate. Um, I've, I've heard stories from law enforcement agents of actually having to arrest the victims in three card money games for filing a false police report. Uh, for example, saying that, that they were robbed uh, with threat of violence when that's not what happened. And um, a, another way in which they are less risky is the fact that typically the con artists outnumber the victim significantly. Um, now, now, aside from sort of the obvious advantages um, in the case of violence or a threat of violence, this also has the advantage that the, the con artists can create a consensus reality and a very powerful and compelling one. Uh, since they're pretending not to know each other, uh, when they, things that they just all sort of agree on, you know, the victim is kind of drug along into. In, in the case of Three Card Money in particular, um, there, there are a lot of, a lot of interesting subtleties. Uh, one is this game, or, or relatives of it, go back over 600 years. In fact, the earliest, uh, currently, the earliest known deception with playing cards is from 1408, and it was a game very similar to Three Card Monty. Now, we don't know all the details, the, the records are vague, but uh, the, the basic idea is that the dealer dealt some cards out, one of them was a winner, the, um, right? It, it, there was a pretend game that the con artists were playing where, where the, the, pl the dealer dealt out cards, the players tried to pick which one was the winner, and the victim thought he knew which one was the winner because it was marked. Uh, in its current form, uh, it came into New Orleans in the 1820s or 30s from Texas, then a part of Mexico, uh, later spread to the Mississippi River boats, um, after the Civil War spread to the railroads, was an extremely popular confidence game in the, in the Old West. Uh, you'll even see it in some Old Westerns. Uh, in in three-card money, there are, there are a whole bunch of, of sort of lies that are sold to the victim as part of this consensus reality. For example, uh, the, the biggest one is it's a game. Um, there's also the fact that the, the other players are playing against the dealer. Right? When, you, when you see people who are apparently in conflict and they agree on something like, oh, it's a game, that, that makes it easier to be drawn into. There's, there's the lie that, that if you bet on the correct card, you will, you will win, you will be paid. Now, there are lots of ways to not pay someone if they bet on the correct card. Uh, we, we only showed off one, one of them. But, uh, you know, long story short is the, 
even if you do manage to get the correct card, you will not get paid one way or another. Um, and, and it's extremely rare to get the correct card because the dealer cheats. So yeah, in, in reality, in reality you're not going to get paid. Um, the, the other players are working with the dealer. In fact, frequently there are several of them. It's not, it's not uncommon for there to be five or six shills and really the, the only, um, only one person in the group is, is not part of the mob and that's the victim. The, the card can be marked in, in other ways. It doesn't have to be have a bent corner. It can be uh, torn a little bit. Uh, it can be mar a, pencil, a dot or a marking can be placed on the back of it with a pencil. Uh, someone can smear something on it. For example, um, a female member of the mob can, can rub her lips and, and rub little lipstick on the back of the card while she's turning it over. Uh, a small piece of paper can be stuck on the back of the card. However it's done, right, the point is the victim believes he has a dishonest advantage. And when he tries to take advantage of it, he loses. Uh, it's also worth remembering Sometimes, sometimes in these, in these games, while, while tourists are being attracted uh, and watching the game, it's easy for the mob to press in on them and pickpocket them. And it's also been heard of that, you know, since, since you're, dealing, you're dealing with a whole group of thieves, right? They pretend not to know each other, but they're really all working together against the victim. Um, it's not unheard of for the victim to go, you know, leave the game, not get taken for everything or, or not play and then some members of the mob follow him around the corner and mug him. And let's see. It's also related to the shell game, which I'm sure some of you have heard of, the, the walnut shells and the pea, which is over 300 years old. Uh, nowadays it's typically done with bottle caps, it used to be done with thimbles, it was called thimble rigging. And um, let's see, there, there, are, there are some uh, there are some, some techniques in that to also give the victim the, the illusion of having an advantage over the dealer. Um, I'm not going to discuss that for time. And I think we're about ready for our second demonstration. So let's, uh, let's pull a couple of chairs out. Uh, Mom Chance. Uh, got your phone? Okay, let's, let's pull a couple of chairs out. And we need, uh, okay, we got three over here. Uh, I think three is good. Okay, so this part of the stage is a bar. That part of the stage over there is a sidewalk on the street. And the action starts over there. Take it away. First, I need to select a victim and learn about them. Oh, yeah, the, the painting convention is going great. No, no, it's... It, my office is in building A. You know I don't go into building G with the accountants. No, you, you've gone too far. Yes. Oh, okay, so you found it? Great. So, uh, what am I supposed to bring to the office party next week? Uh, okay, I guess I'll just beg my wife Gina to make her world famous ribs like last year. Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, the convention floor doesn't open for another couple hours. I, I don't think I'll have a problem finding something to do in Vegas, though. Okay. Now I need to interrupt their train of thought so they forget about the immediate conversation they just had. Oh, excuse me, sorry about that. Oh, it's no problem. Now I need to put the victim at ease. Hey, I know you, we work together. No, 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 we, we do work together, but, and, but we work in different parts of the same company. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you came to this painting convention, and I came to this painting convention. They sent two of us at the same time. That's unbelievable. That's a huge waste of money. And they sent me here to check out accounting software. Unbelievable. What we have totally works, and yet they want to buy something new. It's just a huge waste. Ah, so, so you're in accounting? Oh, yeah, yeah. Out in building G, in the thick of it. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. <sighs> yeah, but we're, we're all having a good time over there in accounting. Hey, don't you, uh, don't we have an office party coming up next week? Uh, maybe, uh, yeah, and your wife, last year, she brought potato salad? No, no, no. She brought barbecue something, wasn't it? Yeah, my wife's ribs. Oh, yeah, those were great. Oh, I'm looking forward to that party this year. Oh, good times at the office. Really, really good times there. So, um, look at the time. Uh, what do you have planned while we wait for the convention to open up? No, I, I don't have any plans yet. Don't have any plans? Check this out. My hotel gave me a coupon. Bring a buddy, no cover charge. Want to go get a drink? Sure. Let's go. 
Oh, hey, man, long time no see. How's it going? Going okay. I, I can't remember the last time I saw you and this guy. Oh, I'm being rude. Forgot to introduce him. This is a guy who works with me over in the paint. Of course, he's not an accountant, but he still is a pretty good guy. Uh, you know, it's been such a long time since I've seen you. I, I can't even remember. And I, last time I saw him was at our office party last year. Let me buy the first round of drinks. Well, well we could... Um, it, okay. So, uh, hey, you want to you wanna help me uh, have a little fun with my buddy over there when he gets back? Sure, I'll give you a hand. Okay. I, uh... Didn't plan for the mic when I was rehearsing. I got a, uh, I got a deck of cards here, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, propose a little something to him. And, and, and when I cut the cards, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take a couple cards off the top of the deck, and then I'm gonna let you see the bottom card of the rest of the deck. And then I'll finish the cut, and, and later I'm gonna ask you to name the card, uh, to name a card, and just just say the card that you saw there. Okay? Can you do that? Sure, no problem. All right, this is gonna be fun. Hey guys. Oh, thanks, man. Uh, it's real nice of you. Of it's real, real nice of you to buy drinks and all, but um, you know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking we should we should be kind of sporting about this. Maybe uh, maybe you and I should should play for who buys the first round. Oh, what kind of thing do you have in mind? Mum chance. Well, what's that? It's a game of pure chance. We each name a card, and then we then we uh, we deal through the deck. I got some cards here. We, we we turn the deck face up and we deal through the cards one at a time. Whoever's card comes up first is the winner. Huh? That seems fair. All right, here, shuffle them up. Okay. Here you go. All righty, and I'll just uh, I'll just give these a cut. And now, uh, what card do you want? I'll take the jack of clubs. All right, and what's my card? Uh, two of diamonds. Two of diamonds. All right. So, what'd you say again? Uh, jack of clubs. Jack of clubs. Two of diamonds. All right. Let's see what we got. Uh, three of spades. Five of hearts. Uh, eight of spades, oh, two of diamonds. Well, I guess you're still paying. <laughs> uh, wow, I just cheated at cards. I don't normally do that sort of thing, but I guess it was ju just for fun, and he was going to buy anyway. So, uh, hey, buddy, you want, you want in on a secret? Sure, I like secrets. You didn't lose by pure chance. Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> it's an old scam I learned years ago. You see, what you do is... When, when I was cutting the cards, I, I only took a couple cards off the top of the deck. And then I let him see the bottom card of the rest. So then the card that he saw was going to be right near the bottom, just a few cards from the bottom. Huh, that's pretty clever. You know, we've got to remember this at the office party next week. We could, we could have a lot of fun. Oh, okay, so he's all right with it. Well, I guess everything's cool. Oh my God. <laughs> Are you guys playing cards? I like, totally love cards. <laughs> Oh my god, can I take your picture? Oh my god, this is going on my MySpace. I totally love MySpace. If you are not on MySpace, you're like way, like, I don't know, old or something. But you need to like check out MySpace. Will you friend me on MySpace? Oh my god, will you be my friend? I'm on Facebook, you could fan me too. It's totally awesome. So you guys playing cards? Can I play some cards? What's going on? Do, do, do you know her? Not at all. Uh, y you? Uh, Come on, guys. Let's play some cards. Cards, 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 cards. Cards. Okay, we're um, we're playing a game called Mum Chance. It's a game. It's a game of pure chance. What we do is we we each name a card, and then we we deal through the deck face up like this, and whoever's card comes up first is the winner. That sounds like totally easy. I'm gonna clean you guys out, but wait, I gotta twit this. Wait, wait, here's 100 to get started. Well, uh, shuffle them up whenever you're ready. Totally. And I'll uh, just give them a cut. So, what, uh, what card do you want? It's the spades. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'm I'm gonna let I'm gonna let this honest fellow who I just met today name my card for me. What's what's my card? Uh, four of clubs. Four of clubs. Okay. Let's see what we got. Uh, six of hearts. Uh, four of diamonds. Eight of spades. Four of clubs. I guess this 
is mine. <sighs> Whatever. I tell you what, let's make this a little bit interesting because that's kind of boring. Let's, um, let's make a round of betting after each, uh, each card. So um, I'll start. How about another 100? Well, I can cover that with the 100 I just won from you. Whatever. Here, shuffle them up. And now I'll just give them a cut. And what card do you want? Ace of spades. <laughs> okay. Uh, what's my card? Uh, nine of diamonds. Ace of spades, nine of diamonds. Let's see what we got. Uh, first cards, the uh, ten of clubs. Okay, um, here's, I'll raise you another hundred. Uh, let's see. Um, I'll see your hundred. I'll raise you, uh, I'll raise you another hundred. Deal, uh, or call, deal the next card, totally. I got it. Alrighty. Let's see, um... Six of hearts. I'll raise you three hundy. Um, yikes, let's see. I've only, um, uh, I've only got 50. I, I might need to tap out here. Hold on, hold on. Um, I got 50. Here. Hey, you got 200? Wow, that's a lot of money, but she is getting on my nerves, and I am sure to win, so... All right, I'll go in for 200. All righty, and now uh, let's see. We got uh, Ace of Spades. <laughs> Suckers. I told you that I would clear you out. Yeah, that's right. Peace out. Damn it. How could we lose? How could we lose? I mean, what are the odds? What are the odds? Now, just out of curiosity, what's the next card? Nine of diamonds. Nine of diamonds. We, we lost by one stupid card. You know, I lost the least on this. I still have a credit card. Why don't you let me buy the, the next round of drinks? And that's how Mr. Victim lost his money. Three Mike Monte here. So, is this on? Um, now this is this is an example of, uh, or this is this is a fairly representative example of, of a, uh, a a gambling type con. In order in order to pull this type of thing off, you only really need three things, right? You need a you need a game that, that you could bet on, or or something you can bet on, really. You need a way to cheat at it. And you need a way to lose even though you're cheating. If you have those three things, you can, you can put this together fairly effectively. Um, okay. If you, if you want to see, see this being done in a, in a poker context, uh, there's, there's a movie called Shade, which has a, a decent dis depiction of it. There's also a movie called The Sting, which I'm guessing many of you have seen, which shows the same basic idea in a uh, racehorse uh, betting context. And in this particular case, we used a sort of a two-stage process to get the, get the victim comfortable with cheating and familiar with doing it and confident in the process. Um, in actual practice, there would be multiple games, but, you know, we, we wanted to try and stay under time here. And... Uh, Let's see, we also, we also try to illustrate the idea of making the victim not feel empathy for the person that they're trying to swindle. This, this, this particular uh, game that, that we use to illustrate this with um, you know, naming the two cards and dealing through the deck is also over 400 years old. So these, these things still work pretty much the way they always have. And... Let's see. That's, that's all I've got to say about that for now. So, let's move on to our next demonstration. We are now in the lobby of a hotel. And uh, there's, there's some kind of shindig going on, which includes uh, a swap meet. So, let's see. Where's... Uh, here, why don't, why don't you take this one? Here. There we go. Let's not get tangled up. And all righty.
Oh, what you got in that box? Oh, uh, just some old electronic components that have been taking up space in my garage. Um, actually, I was trying to get rid of them at the swap meet, but they wouldn't let me park my garage in the lo or park my truck in the loading dock. Oh man. Um, so I gotta go move it. Would you mind watching this box for me for a little while? Yeah, sure, no problem. All right, thanks. Are, is this your stuff? Or are you selling this? Uh, no, no. The guy, the guy who is, uh, just stepped out for a minute. Oh dang! Oh my goodness! Would you look at that? That is an Apple One. That, look at that! Look at all the detail. That's a that's rare. That's classic right there. I bet you the Waz himself made that. How much are you selling it? Or, or how much is he selling it for? Do I, you know? I have I have no idea. I mean, he said he was going to try and be back as soon as he could, but he also said he parked a ways away. Oh dang! I'm totally late for a meeting. I can't wait for him. But here, I tell you what. Um, give him my card, would you please, darling, and let him know that I will buy that uh, twenty thousand dollars. Thank you. Uh, yeah, sure. Oh wow! Thanks for watching this stuff for me. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, by the way, how, um, how much are you selling it for? Well, it's mostly junk. Well, see this part right here? That's oh, yeah? a that's a flux capacitor. And I figure it's worth at least a grand, but I don't want to have to deal with finding buyers for all the pieces, so I'm just going to sell it as a set. Well, I'm well, you know, whoever whoever buys it's going to have to piece it out too. I mean, you're you're selling it as a set for your convenience. Maybe uh, maybe you'd be willing to go down a little. Uh, how about 800? Um, uh, 900 and you got a deal. Okay. <laughs> I just happen to have a huge wad of cash on me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Bitiki. We're sorry. The number you have reached has been disconnected or is no longer in service. And that's how Mr. Victim lost his money. So this is this is an example of uh, what I call the buying con, right? Where the the object is to to induce the victim to buy something that is not worth nearly as much as he thinks it is. Now, uh, this is of course a very common theme in fraud. It's it's sort of the definition of of a lot of kinds of fraud. But what makes this into a confidence game is the fact that the uh, victim is induced to believe that he is taking advantage of someone else. In this particular case, um, right, the basic idea is, oh, he doesn't know what he's got. It's worth way more than he thinks it's worth. Um, now, I'm, I'm guessing this hasn't actually been done with Apple Ones. But, you know, the basic, the basic principle is the same. Uh, this one's also centuries old. Um, you know, I've, I've personally found, found references over 400 years old, and uh, beyond that, they, they go into languages I don't speak. But, uh, yeah, so the basic... Now, now this, uh, this scam's been worked with all sorts of objects. Um, ironically enough, both some of the oldest and some of the newest stories are about the same. Right, the stories from 400 years ago. Uh, one of the most popular things is jewelry, in particular rings. That's also there are also plenty of stories floating around of it being worked today, with rings, jewelry rings. Uh, it, it can be seen worked with a ring in the movie Shade again, uh, but but this basic scam can be worked with anything: uh, jewelry, lottery tickets, violins, gold bricks, art, stock, collectible coins. Um, uh, for example, with uh, with a gold brick, uh, you know, oh, I, I know a guy who's who's um, bought this gold brick 40 years ago. He's short on cash. He needs to sell it. He thinks it's worth the same as it was worth 40 years ago, right? Things like that. And um, my goodness, we're uh, we're ahead of time here. I'm I'm just about done, and so I'm going to leave you with a couple of thoughts. Uh, one is there is a lot of truth in the saying that you can't cheat an honest man. Ironically, although confidence games are one of the kinds of um, crimes of deception that can harm a victim the most, 
they're also one of the crimes that are the easiest to protect yourself against. There are really only two rules you have to follow to not be taken by most, the vast majority of confidence games. Avoid any chance to take dishonest advantage of another person, and don't try to get something for nothing. Now, I, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open for questions, but before I do, I want to say, where's, where's our fourth? All right, I want to say, say a huge thank you to my cast. Um, we all did, uh, they, they, they put in a ton of work on this. Uh, yes, indeed. Um, Nikita and Alex and Kevin Mitnick, who made a special guest appearance. And... And, uh, and that guy that I, I, I found in the parking lot sleeping on a cot. <laughs> and I'm gonna, I'm gonna open the floor for questions now. Pardon? Oh, that would be cool. That would be awesome. So I've just been informed that someone agreed to demonstrate the Monty. With actual cards. So like here or somewhere else? Here. Here, okay. Um, so I will, I will open the floor for questions for a couple of minutes, and, um, and then we can, we can move into that. And before, before I do, I'm, uh, I'm just going to say I will, I will try to share what I can about confidence games. I'm not going to answer questions about myself personally or my history or experiences. Um, so are there any questions? Well, that was easy. Uh, did I miss one? Um, OK, yeah, you? Repeat the, repeat the question back. Uh, the question was, would the Madoff scam be a confidence game? <sighs> that really depends on your viewpoint. Well, well because... <sighs> uh, I guess what that comes down to is, what do you think the victims believed? Um, you know, do they... Did they think that, oh, there's really no way he can be making these kinds of returns honestly? But screw it, I'm going to invest with him anyways? Um, if, you know, if, if you think the victims really believed that, then I guess you could make a strong argument for that. If you, um, if you think they just thought he was really good, then, then no, I would, I would just call that fraud. Um, I mean, it's still, it's still crime, <laughs> but... I mean, it doesn't fit quite. It doesn't fit quite so neatly into, in, you know, into the category as, as the things that we demonstrated. But uh, any any other questions? Damn, I can't see anything with these lights. Okay, someone's pointing to someone. Oh, in the green shirt. Okay, I finally saw you. I see. I saw three people pointing at you. <laughs> oh goodness, I could go on. Um, I could go on and on. Sorry, the question. The question was, uh, do I have any recommended reading in confidence games? Um, there are a couple of references that I contributed uh, to the, the DEF CON CD, and I, I imagine they'll be on the, the website. There, there, is so, there has been a lot written on the subject, and personally, uh, I find most of the older material just as good as most of the newer material. So, you know, I've sort of spent half a lifetime reading on it, and, and I think there's plenty left for, for the rest of my life. But, um, <laughs> A, a really good place to start is a book called Gambling Scams by, by Darwin Ortiz. Uh, it's got a whole chapter on the subject, which, uh, w which has good illustrations of, of the different roles played by the confidence artists in the gang, um, good illustrations of what it is, what it is in the game that, that hooks the victim in each case. So, so Gambling Scams by Darwin Ortiz is a very good place to start. Uh, actually, someone just before the talk, I was talking to someone who, who reminded me about a, a wonderful book called *The Big Con* uh, by David. I believe it's M A U. Pardon? Mauer. Mauer. Excellent, excellent. I, I was just going to spell it. Um, I believe it's M A U R E R. Is that correct? Yes. So, wonderful, wonderful book on the subject, and I could probably keep listing books for for ten minutes or more. So I'm going to stop there. Um, any more questions? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I can't hear whoever it is that's speaking. 
Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, the, it, was, it was a comment that uh, the shows Hustle and Leverage are both very good ones. Um, any other questions, or should we move into the, OK, we got one there. Uh, the, the nomenclature is, is not 100% agreed upon. I mean, I tend to consider those fraud, but, but there's still, oh sorry, the, the question was how do you draw a distinction between, between these types of con games where you're trying to trap someone in dishonesty and things like medical scams. Uh, I, you know, different people have different opinions on this. My personal opinion is that most medical scams are, are simply fraud, right? You're selling something that isn't what you claim you're selling. Um, you know, you, you claim that you can psychically pull someone's organs out of their body without cutting them open and fix it and put them back. And if you actually can't do that, then when they pay you, you're not really giving them what you claim to be giving them. Uh, I mean, it's, it's still, it's still a, a crime. It's still a very devastating crime in, in many cases. I, I certainly don't mean to minimize it. And uh, yeah, I mean, the, the nomenclature is, is really a matter of opinion in, in that case. So. All right, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna turn the floor over to Apollo, who has who has kindly agreed to give us a demonstration. So are we? How how closely can how closely can we zoom in on the tabletop? Okay. If you want, I can do it out there. If you just want to see where the monitor is. There is a table right there. Well, yeah, the question is, can we get, can we get the, uh, if this we do it on the this. table, can we get it on the can camera? Can you come in on me here, right here where my hands are? Can you do it on a chair? It looks like you're, this is about as far as you can get, right? Okay. Uh, can you hear me all right, here? Yeah. All right. Uh, there's a simple movement. If you can't hear me in the back, just raise your hand so I can see about where you are. Okay, I'm going to talk to you. Can you hear me all right? Yes, that's a, I'm taking the raised hand as a yes. Go. Okay. I was going to say, we got plenty of mics if you need one. All right, yeah, <laughs> we can bring in one mic. The only thing is, could you hold it for me? I'd be happy to. Here, what he was talking about with the three card Monty, there's one move that they use for the slides. Now there's a move called a hype. Since he had the cards here, I just wanted you guys to be able to see that. Now it's hard for you to be able to telegraph it here, so I'm gonna hold these up and exaggerate the movement. So you're gonna be able to see a gap. Now, are you, are you gonna give away the move? Yes, I'm gonna give away the move. Oh crap, I wouldn't have agreed to this. But <laughs> afterwards, if you guys wanna see this with it fooling you, even after you've been educated, you can still do it again, you won't be able to see it. So for instance, I've learned some of the moves that are necessary for the three-card Monty, but if I were watching a group, I would never gamble, just like what he said, because that frame that he was talking about, with the wire, the stick, and the shade, the steer, all those positions, it, you can't win it even if you know the move and you can't see the move. The move basically works like this. It's called the hype. You have one card, you're going to show the other cards the same. So you'd say that you can win on the red, you lose on the black. The exaggerated move is a throw over of the top card while they apparently think that the second card is going down. So when they throw down like this, they're actually throwing the card on top. I want to try to do that where you can see here. So you can see the two movements, the bottom card here, the top card on the top. So as I would throw down, I throw across from the top movement. To do that, it's a toss. That motion looks the same as whether I do the toss here or here. Now if we can try to get in a little bit, let's see, I'm going to try to do this against without my badge on there. So you guys can see just this position here. Now if this goes down, and these obviously have a bend. So the way that you fix this for three card Monty, you bend it in the horizontal position here. Then they put what's called wings on it. Now the wings stop it from being seen on the corner. So that these edges here are flat on the table. And this bump in the center when it's thrown down also stops it from the wind whenever you're working outside and they're about to kick the box. So when you're throwing the card, you're holding it in this position. As you throw down, you're throwing the second position card. Like I said, I know it's very hard for you guys to see. If you guys want to see it up close afterwards, I'd be happy to do it for you guys one-on-one. -on -one. I hope that adds a little clarity. Thanks. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah, thank you, Paul. All right. And... Um, I guess uh, I forgot which room we're going to be hanging out in afterwards. Uh, was it 10... 105. 105. We're hanging out in room 105 afterwards for a few minutes. If uh, if you want to come and and talk to us uh, more more close up, and have a uh, have a great time. Thank you for all coming. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>